This episode was brought to you by the number 42. Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is John Fillmore and welcome to another episode of The Pokemon Analyst. Now, last time we were talking about um, more Pokemon that we could add and let's take a look at what we did. So we added a Ferrothorn for its defense and a Garchomp for its force, right? Now, the last two Pokemon that we need to add, we need to be careful of, right? Because we need to um, look at what type of weaknesses we still have, right? And that is called uh, type resistance, right? For one, it's called type resistance because type resistance, right, is all the mo uh, all the types that you have uh, a Pokemon that is good against, right? So, for example, uh, for a normal uh, move, we have something that is resistant to it, right? We have one that's resistant to water, right? And we also have one that's resistant uh, to fairy. However, we do also have two Pokemon that are uh, weak to fairy. We have one that's even uh, four times weak to fire, and we have one that's four times weak uh, to fighting, and one that's four times weak to ice. So these are things that we really need to be careful of, right? These are things that our last two Pokemon need to um, take into account, right? So let's look at what we have. Now, we have uh, nothing that's actually resistant to any bug, right? Uh, we have uh, two that are weak to steel, uh, we have uh, a fire weakness here, and uh, we have uh, some fairy, some ice, uh, some fighting, uh, all that kind of stuff. So we need to be able to actually uh, take these weaknesses out as much as possible. Now if you look carefully, a lot of these actually are, um, a lot of these, these errors, these flaws, or uh, these weaknesses best to say weaknesses. Um, these are uh, weaknesses that can be solved with the use of fire, right? So we need a fire Pokemon. So I made a little uh, team, or better yet, a collection of fire Pokemon that ac actually could really help us in our endeavor. So let's look at what we have. So first of all, Charizard. Charizard, pretty good. Um, it is a special attacker, uh, which is actually what we're looking for. Um, now, why do I say that? Well, let's first look at some of the things that we have. We have the Gardevoir, right? Which is a, uh, a special attacker. But then we have the Weavile, the Ferrothorn, and the Garchomp, which are all three attackers, right? And you want to have a little bit of balance in your team, uh, because let's say uh, we were fighting um, a physical wall, right? So something that can take phys uh, physical attacks very, very well. Well, we have three of these. That's not going to do anything against it. We have only one that's really going to hammer it home. Of course, it is a Mega, so it is going to do quite some damage. But still, you want to have it a little more rounded, right? So we need something with a little more special oomph, right? So that's why we are looking for a special uh, attacker, S to which the, um, the Charizard works very well, right? So that's an option. Um, that's scary, actually. Hold on a sec. Is anyone else seeing this? Or do uh, Typhlosion and Garchomp have exactly the same stats? Okay, that's creepy. Huh. Who knew? Well, now you do. Um, so Typhlosion is, again, uh, a physical, or sorry, special attacker. Which is also something we're looking for. Heatron is another special attacker. Also a very good uh, fairy counter. Right? If you have your hands on a, on a Heatron, well, first of all, you burn them. And second of all, they uh, you can use it as a very, very, very good uh, fairy counter. Because fire and steel are resistant to fairy. So anything like a moon blast uh, or a dazzling gleam or a hyper voice with pixelate is not going to do anything, right? Which is really uh, good if you're missing uh, a fairy counter. Uh, the Infernape is fast, has a lot of utility, can be used quite often uh, for um, 
for fake out can be used very well for uh, quick guard. It has uh, U-turn as well. Nope, it has to have the dash in there. U-turn it has as well. Um, it also has, you know, a lot of fire moves, of course, uh, close combat. Uh, it has a couple of really good moves in there. Uh, so let's look at these guys. It is a mixed attacker. Uh, its defense is a little lacking, but it's uh, it's fast, and you can use it as a mixed attacker, so that's quite good. Uh, let's look at Chandelure for a sec, right? Now, you could use Chandelure, because we are looking for a, um, a special attacker. And this thing is 145 base special attack, which is really good. And this is kind of a, a, a thing that I... Um, that I built, just a little bit of a, a, a build-up. Um, notice that it has uh, choice specs, which is uh, very handy in this uh, particular situation, because its special attack is going to go through the roof, um, and anything that is weak to uh, a flamethrower, a shadow ball, a dark pulse, and an energy ball is pretty much going to go down. Um, so you can use it to extreme efficiency. The only problem that I have with it is that uh, choice specs it limits your moves and I rather like to keep moves um, you know uh, unrestrained I want to make sure that if I want to use a certain move uh, because the game changes because it so often does um, that I, I do want to make sure that I can hit back equally hard right that I don't have to be like oh well Best switch out my Chandelure because he's trapped in a move that's not going to do Jack Diddly Squad against that certain Pokemon, right? I want to kind of keep it loose, right? And that Choice Packs kind of hinders it. Now, you could switch it for something else, um, but I have my eye on a different Pokemon altogether. And that is an Arcanine, right? This is another build that I kind of did. Let's look at some of these stats. Uh, I did make it a, uh, a mixed attacker, right? Uh, with max speed. Just be able to outspeed uh, a couple of those uh, threats uh, against your team. And it works very well uh, against uh, any opponents to Omega Gardevoir. Like we said in Episode 2. Uh, because it has the Intimidate, it has the Will-O-Wisp, it has the Helping Hand. Uh, the Wild Charge for uh, a physical electric type. Just to take care of any of those um, special defensive uh, water types. Uh, and you have the Flamethrower as... Uh, the special fire type uh, to take care of any of those uh, physical barriers or any of the weaknesses that we saw in here. So I really do like it. Now I'm not quite sure about the Rocky Helmet, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I kind of just put it there because Rocky Helmet in general is a good move. I could put it on my Garchomp, but I decided not to. Uh, and that might change, right? So I'm going to copy this and bring it to our team. Paste, right? And there we go. That's Pokemon number five. So let's put this into our particular um, our particular team, right? And if you're wondering uh, what this website is, it's called Team Magma Builder. You can see it right here. Um, I'll also leave a description uh, in the comments section below or the description somewhere around there. Um, and you can find it and uh, use it to your heart's content. Uh, this is type resistance uh, to see what uh, glaring weaknesses you might have, right? And this is type coverage. This has to do with your move sets. I usually don't use this one um, because it seems a little finicky, uh, but that's probably just because I don't know how to use it. So if you know how to use it, awesome. And please tell me then. Um, so we have the Arcanine. We now see that we have um, a weakness to ground and to fighting, right? I'm not quite uh, scared about the fighting because we already have uh, something that is uh, resistant to fighting, right? That's the Psychic. Um, and we have the Reflect from Weavile and the Intimidate from the Arcanine to kind of cancel out any of those physical fighting uh, types, which most of them are. Uh, not all of them, but if I do encounter one of those, I should be able to take it out with the rest of my team. Uh, and then you have the Ground type. Now, um... As our last Pokemon, I'm, I am going to look at here, but we don't really have a lot of weaknesses left, right? So I'm going to kind of pull this one out of my sleeve, and that's the Milotic. Now, why the Milotic? 
Well, I've I've noticed in uh, in the past that I find it very difficult to take care of landers, right? And that's probably just because of the team that I used. Um, but I usually find it quite difficult to take care of one, uh, nonetheless. So I want to make sure that I can. And like I said in the earlier episode, episode three, that Milotic is actually a very good counter against it with competitive, right? And not only is it a good counter against uh, Landorus T, but also against Scrafty, uh, against Arcanine, against Salamence, anything that uses um, Intimidate or Icy Wind or anything like that, uh, this will work wonders for you, right? So I'm going to use uh, a Scald. I'm going to use a uh, Icy Wind. I could use an Ice Beam and I might later, uh, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to give it, of course, a Protect, of course. And I'm going to give it Recover. Now, it does know some other status moves. It does know Refresh. It does know Confuse Ray. Uh, a couple of these really good moves. It does know Toxic as well. I mean, that's kind of a whoopee doo because pretty much every Pokemon knows Toxic. Um, so if you want to make it a more of a wall uh, and just kind of kill your Pokemon um, with, uh, with Toxic, kill your opponent, then you can do it that way as well. Um, and then I'm going to give it a Citrus Berry. And the Citrus Berry works quite well with Recover. The Citrus Berry, um, when, you're, uh, uh, you, when your health gets low, um, it's going to increase it by one-fourth of its max HP, right? And uh, Recover, you can yet, then use Recover afterward to bring it even farther. So then you're back at, hopefully, um, full, uh, full HP, right? Now, it is slow, so you need to be careful for that. But... Um, that's just one of the downfalls of, uh, I'm a Milotic, and you're just gonna have to, uh, somehow work around that, right? Now, this is what, um, the, uh, the Pokemon Showdown advises. I'm gonna change that a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take down its HP a bit, and I'm going to increase its special attack, right? And, let's see... Do I want a bold nature? Yeah, okay, I'll keep it at the bold nature, uh, just to ward off any of those uh, physical attacks. And then I'm going to add the rest into speed. It's not much, but every little bit counts, right? So it's a little bit slower, but it's going to uh, be um, a quite a bit big wall to take care of. And especially with competitive, if it gets going, it can be quite destructive, right? So that is my team. Of course, I did change a couple of things while uh, you were away. Uh, I added a normal gem uh, to my Weavile. I was looking around and I'm like, hmm, what could I do with a pickpocket Weavile uh, and with fake outs? And they advised to use a normal gem uh, and then fake out because fake out is a normal type, of course. Uh, and then the normal gem is going to increase uh, its power and it's going to make your opponent flinch. Then your normal gem is going to be gone and you can use pickpocket. Again, I'm not quite sure if it works at the same time as Fake Out, where this one gets, um, you know, used up, and then you can use Pickpocket and automatically take their item. Uh, but you know what? We'll use it for now. And of course, this is all liable to change, but we will find out. I gave uh, Arcanine the Rocky Helmet. Um, again, not quite sure what I could use, but... We'll have to see, right? So this is our team. Um, I like it. Uh, and then next week, we are going to start uh, actually battling. Uh, but again, I'm going to leave that for next time. So thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, then please like, subscribe, anything like that. Leave a comment, question, friendly critique in the comments below, and I will get to it. Um, other than that, I have one thing to report. Uh, next week, I'm going to be on vacation. Yes, I will be in the reach of a computer. Yes, I will be in the reach of uh, a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, but the only problem is that I'll probably be busy. So hopefully I can still uh, do one or two episodes uh, that week. But we will see what comes of it, right? So hopefully I can still um, pull off one. I'm, I'm pretty sure I still can. Um, but you never know with these certain things. So if there is a little bit of a delay... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, and I will get back to it as quickly as possible the week thereafter, right? Uh, but other than that, there's nothing else to report. So 
Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and this is John Fillmore signing off and wishing everyone on the opposite side of the screen a very pleasant day. Goodbye!